sense. In my mind, it doesn't really make much sense. Well, in my mind, it doesn't really make much sense. In my mind, it doesn't really make much sense. Well, in my mind, it doesn't really make much sense. In my mind, it doesn't really make much sense. Well, in my mind, it doesn't really make much sense. In my mind, it doesn't really make much sense. I like how they just suspend it. You know, pretty much yeah, everything in museums or mainland Europe and in the UK, 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 UK has been completely UK, stopped. 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 There are people just going over to countries and just nicking stuff. And that is everything in all of the museums, all of the time. which is exactly a hundred years before Taylor Swift was born, which is fascinating because they're both like the same person to me in terms of like the way that I love them, but in different ways because they're both hugely problematic, but like amazing artists. So he was born into the, the richest family in Europe at that point, And it was um, a really interesting time in European history because it was, uh, he was born in Vienna and it was at the point of a kind of a cultural boom in Vienna. Um, so there was like so much art, so much music being produced at that time, and his family was like really at the center of it. So they had they had an immense amount of money, but um, kind of new money because his dad made it big in the engineering world, um, and so he had a really kind of rich cultural upbringing. Um, Brahms essentially was kind of created into the, like the star that he was from. Um, learning to play the piano, well not learning, but like practicing in their house because they had like seven grand pianos in their house. He had a really like overbearing father um, that meant that kind of 
Wittgenstein's life and his relationship with others in the future was really messed up, which is probably best reflected in the fact that three out of four of his brothers um, killed themselves. And so there was kind of a, a history of depression within his family, and I think that is definitely reflected in um, his works. When his father eventually died, Wittgenstein actually donated like all of the money that he inherited to artists. What he did with his life though, he's a bit of a, um, a mummy rabbit in terms of like, you know Peppa Pig, the mummy rabbit character. In every episode, whenever they need like a bus driver or a vet, they'll always get mummy rabbit to be the vet. And he had like so many jobs that he's like a mummy rabbit. That's, that's kind of the analogy. Um, so he was like, he considered being a monk. I don't think he ever was a monk. He designed multiple and built multiple houses. Um, so much so that um, his sister's house he designed, he spent a year working just on the locks on the doors. And once it was almost done, he made them kind of start again completely almost because the ceiling had to be raised by 30 millimeters. Um, so he was like a massive perfectionist, um, which was probably ingrained into him like through how cruel his father was to him as a child and the thing is like the most fascinating thing about him isn't his philosophy which is incredibly impressive because his philosophy is incredible but it's his actual life so he he went to school with hitler um it wasn't clear whether they kind of knew each other or anything which is especially interesting because his family are of um jewish heritage even though i think he was technically baptized catholic um and he was really fascinated by weiniger's works um, especially a book called um, Sex and Character, which is a highly anti-Semitic, homophobic and sexist work, um, and so would have been like directly attacking um, multiple of Wittgenstein's identities as he was um, bisexual as well. Um, yet he went to Weiniger's funeral after Weiniger killed himself. So there's like a theme within his life of kind of self-hatred and doubt and probably was why he led his life in the way he did. Um, and that book itself, um, Wittgenstein did um, go on to kind of criticize it, he, but he said kind of what makes the book great is the fact that you can essentially add a negation sign to it and it would be perfect. And so it's kind of interesting that he had such a fascination with a book that is so horrific and essentially went on to inspire like a lot of eugenics and a lot of um, Nazi talking points um, but yet he was so interested in it and it kind of was what drove him to be the kind of fascinating person that he is. He was a school teacher at one point going back to the mummy rabbit point um, and he was quite abusive to his pupils. He'd spend like two hours a day with them. They were young pupils like seven, eight. Um, two hours a day of them in the morning like doing really hard mathematics because he's obviously really good at mathematics and he would um, kind of cane them and pull their ears and stuff um, and there was one story where he hit a boy over the head multiple times until he um, passed out essentially carried the boy to the head teacher's office and fled the school on the way out he um, saw the father of the boy and then he was kind of put on trial at court and he was like exiled from the village in some kind of rural part of Austria um, and then about 10 years later he came round back round to the village and tried to find a lot of the victims of his kind of harassment um, and apologized to them which I think is also reflected in the fact that his one of his main works that he wrote while fighting in World War One for the Austria-Hungary army he completely dismissed all of his works about 10 years later and claimed that they were all complete, complete like ridiculous. Um, so he had a lot of inner turmoil um, and never really like forged that many relationships, although the relationships he did forge, like they kind of ended by a death or like quite bad tragedy. Um, but I think his like final words were something like, tell them I had a happy life, something like that, which is crazy if you look at what he like went through. But also I know that if he met me, he, he would hate me. And that's probably like something I find quite intriguing about him.
I think it was around 2018 that that bloke showed up at market. Essentially for a couple of weeks he had this stall where he'd sell little tiny like paper models. They were like tiny little ambulances and he'd just hang them up from the ceiling on a stall so they'd be suspended above him. And he'd just sell them for like, I'm sorry, like five quid. I can't remember the price. But um, nobody really knew what to make of it or what they meant. You know, I, I, they bought them. I, everyone bought one. I think I even bought one at one point. It was the mystery of it that intrigued everyone and kept them coming back. Every day he'd be stood there just selling his little paper models and nobody knew why. No one knew what the fuck this guy's deal was. And it, it it just weirded everyone out, but also intrigued them enough to want to, to buy what he was selling. When the police showed up the following morning, I think everyone collectively understood what had happened. See, that looks so cool. I love it. I was, uh, how would you feel if I called your shop mid? Are you trying to avoid severe water damage? It won't let me. It will not let me. Are you trying to avoid severe... Fuck! It won't let me. Oh, stupid. For I have learned to look on nature, not as in the hour of thoughtless youth, but in hearing oftentimes the still sad music of humanity, nor harsh nor grating, though of ample power to chasten and subdue. And I have felt a presence that disturbs me with the joy of elevated thoughts, a sense sublime of something far more deeply interfused, whose dwelling is the light of setting suns. Playing an intricate game with your hair and this umbrella. The two are in harmony. Oh, that's from Tintin Abbey, my words were. It's the only bit of poetry I've ever memorised. I don't know why. It's just easy. It's cool. Poems about finding spirituality in nature. It's a leaky cathedral. 
I should be on TV. I could be a t television presenter. Going in. Fuck this shot. Fuck you. No, Fuck the no, no. I said this bit of me speaking isn't going in. That was not implicit. And then what do we say? Uh, just like whatever comes to mind, which will probably be nothing. So um, uh, you okay? <laughs> I don't have arm. I've never had arms or legs before. This is a weird oh, adjustment to make. Okay. Right now I need to like. Should I just sit cross-legged? Or is that weird? Maybe that's weird. I walk around and like, it's like, and it's just, 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 and and so I'm just trying to stop saying that 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 I'm just trying to
cover a circle just the this this everything the picture I took was red oh, yeah. but just like the vibe oh yeah it's my paper uh, yeah thanks okay thank you